Hello and welcome. My name is Inge Patch and today I want to talk with you about the topic Beware of the Symptomatic Solutions, Archetype Shifting in the Burden. This is a video made for change makers, social entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, activists, everyone who really wants to bring about a change. And this can be a very helpful tool I found out in the past to figure out whether the solution you're imagining is really bringing about a fundamental change or is just implementing a symptomatic change and needs to be supplemented with something which brings about a fundamental change. So if you are like one of these, belong to one of these groups or you're thinking about really bringing a change in your community, uh, you this can be a very helpful tool for you to figure out whether is this really the key leverage point where you can make a change and what you can do best with your social business. So uh, this idea of the symptomatic and fundamental solutions um, is something which is one tool from systemic thinking, which I'm a big fan of, and you will find a few more videos of systemic thinking on my YouTube channel. Systemic thinking simply means that you have independent actors or activities, and they are connected through relationships. And some of these relationships reinforce each other. So uh, the more you do good, the more you get, you get to meet people who do good. The more you're motivated to do good, the more you will do good, the more you get to meet. And see, you see, this is a reinforcing loop, for example. No? And there are many other type of loops which we can find in a dynamic like this, uh, which are connecting activities, agents, um, and persons, so to say. And this particular uh, tool I want to present to you today is called the archetype of shifting the burden, which can be uh, brought back to Peter Senge's book, The Fifth Discipline, in which he introduces this idea of drawing systemic loops uh, as a very helpful tool in order to see dependencies and relationships and reinforcing loops and balancing loops. And he has also developed these archetypes, which are like reoccurring patterns, which we can see, which he has found out to be happening very often. And once you have trained yourself in recognizing this, you will see them all over the place. So this particular one is called shifting the burden. And uh, it's also called the addiction loop. And it works as follows. Um, and we will see in a while why it's called addiction loop. No? So you have a problem. And there is like a symptomatic solution. So the more you have the problem, the more likely you implement the symptomatic solution indicated by this plus. And the more you implement the symptomatic solution, the less the problem will be. There is also, you could also say there is a problem and you implement the fundamental solution. And then with a delay, this is indicated by these two lines here, the problem will also be solved. Well, when you implement the symptomatic solution, there will actually some side effect and this side effect will hamper your possibility or your likeliness or your willingness to actually implement a fundamental solution. So let's fill this with some life. One example, you have a person, this person has back pain because he or she is sitting in front of the laptop the whole day and is not doing any sports and is uh, in the evening hanging out on the couch and so on. So there are certain habits or lifestyles or work arrangements which are causing this back pain at the first time. So the actual uh, fundamental solution would be to actually change the habits or work life or whatever and then slowly back pain would actually reside, no? But then the symptomatic solution is to take, say you take a painkiller and then of course the back pain will also go away, but it will come back again and you are like in this loop of being addicted to painkillers. That's why it's also called the addictive loop. And the, taking the painkiller is actually impairing uh, the physical feedback your body is giving you and saying something is wrong and because you don't feel this anymore, you're less likely to change the habits. Um, another example would be, for example, the gap between the rich and the poor. So uh, the symptomatic solution we very often employ here is saying, okay, we have to make more employment. If people are just going more work, we have a lower gap between rich and poor because people will earn something and so on. No? Um, while I would claim, and I have made a separate video about this, and I will not discuss this in detail, that the actual fundamental solution is, for example, to say we have to change, go away from this interest uh, money with interest and compound interest, and we have to go to an interest-free money in the system without dividend and other capital gains. Um, only then, slowly, with a delay, the gap between rich and poor will become closer and closer again. But as long as we run, for example, employment programs and we put people a lot into work, there is less time to think about our system, for these people to lobby actually against the system and so on. Hence, the possibility that the interest-free money uh, world will become reality has been lower. A third example is, for example, if you think about environmental destruction, 
uh, this can be, you can imagine whatever you want now, be it the CO2 in the atmosphere, be it the biodiversity loss, be it the pollution of certain water bodies or the air and so on and so on. So um, a fundamental solution would be say, okay, we really come into a circular economy where there is no harmful subsistences, where all, all material is actually full, going 100% into circles, not just being recycled, which is a bit a different topic, but I have talked about this in a different video, but it's fully circular. And then slowly, with a delay, we'll be able to handle this. Yet the fundamental solution we very often apply is saying, okay, well, let's have some green technology, which lowers the the negative footprint we have, and therefore we have less environmental destruction, but this very often leads to a technological login. Just think about, for example, for of, uh, of a company which is um, having a huge logistics of, I don't know, selling tomatoes all over Europe, no? So probably the fundamental solution would be saying, how can we decentralize tomato production? Why do we need in Austria to having this glass house tomatoes, this greenhouse tomatoes coming from Spain, from the Netherlands, from wherever? Uh, so why can't we have our own glass house here and therefore have less transport? No, The green technology could be that this company is saying, well, we just invest into e trucks, for example, and now they're distributing their tomatoes with e-trucks, but it's still, and they haven't spent a lot of money, of course, no? So they will want the e-truck business to keep on going and have this distribution. So I hope you see how there is a, a fundamental and a symptomatic way of solving this problem. And I hope you got a certain idea what is the difference between. So how do you get out of this trap now? System theory is now saying us that in order to really solve the problem, you should apply the symptomatic and the fundamental solution at once. So it's important to apply both. If you only would do the, the fundamental one, uh, you would have the urgent problem. So you will have so much back pain that you're not able to really think about how could you make a change in your life or that you would not be able to even go running even if you wanted to, no? So you first have this, this symptomatic solution and the fundamental solution. And slowly, as the fundamental solution is starting to really change the problem on a deeper lying level, you can slowly fade out the symptomatic solution and saying, okay, now I need less and less and less of this. So this is what we can learn from the systems theory. Let me now come to one example, uh, which I had in the social business workshop once, uh, which shows very nicely how this, in a very early stage of designing your social business, social enterprise or other activity can be a very helpful and handy tool to use. So there was a group who said, okay, we want to start a library in a bus with which we can go around and bring some life to the old people in, uh, in the rural area. I think it was of Styria or something like this. Um, so there are like too many old people. They don't have any interaction and we want to bring something there. Let's have a, a book library, which we bring there now. So they wanted to actually tackle this psychosocial effects of loneliness so that more and more old people would sit in the villages, maybe their families are in the cities for working and they would be lonely and they don't have contact. And that's what they basically wanted to tackle with this. And then we started to just ask this question. You can also use this three-step approach for your social problem in order to see whether this is a fundamental or symptomatic solution. So the first thing is saying, okay, let's analyze the problem's origin and understand the effective leverage. This can be done uh, just roughly by, by discussing about it and saying what is the background or there are like very sophisticated tools um, such as a systems thinking course uh, available online by, by various providers. Um, but roughly, if we analyze this for the example we have given before, we could say, okay, there are like three rough there could be three, depending on the setting and the, the exact area, but we were finding three different things which could be the actual fundamental problem behind it. So one would be the family structures. No, there are very often nuclear families, very often the young go towards the city and then they have the children there and sometimes they come to visit the grandparents, maybe on the weekends, but normally they're living quite far away. Or even if they're living in the same village, very often they have their own house. Uh, where they live with the small children and the grandparents live in an apartment, maybe a bit further away. So this is one, um, it, it seems quite normal to us in Europe, but I have been living for many years in Nepal and it's not the only way how families can live together. There are advantages and disadvantages, but I think that one side effect of this lifestyle, which we choose in Europe, is having a lot of old people being lonely. 
Another one would be the values which we apply as a society, and especially when you're in the neoliberal discourse. Uh, and if you listen to, uh, I think I watched, uh, as analyzing a video with students the other day, which was talking about the GDP, and then there was in, in the video by, I think it was one governmental authority, was it the United Nations? I'm not sure. I think the UNDP it was. It was saying something like, yes, and Europe is facing the problem because there are so many old people which are not productive, no? But this is a value we apply to them, no? And this value also shapes then again how we treat them. We treat, not we, not everyone in society, but how in a majority of cases old people are treated, no? As saying, you're not productive, you're put in a side corner of society and we don't have any use for you if you're like 70, 75 years old, no? Um, Another one would be, for example, the spatial design we have. And here we again in a lock-in effect and saying we have built up a lot of apartments, small apartments. We have built even homes for the old people to be there treated very well. But then again, they are separated from, from the young people. And I, I could see it in my family, how actually my daughter has been bringing life into the life of my father, yeah, who, who would be much worse off if there would not be this three-year child running around him, no? So um, this is also simply a few things, and I don't want to criticize this for good, but I would say if we talk about loneliness, we have to look into these questions and how they are the fundamental problem. So once we have done this exercise, we can say we review the solution, the idea of having a bus with books going to the village and providing old people with a book. Like, would we consider that symptomatic or fundamental? No? And we were figuring out, okay, that's rather symptomatic. It's something which might keep them busy, but again, it doesn't solve really that they have less relationships in their life and so on. And if you figure out that's the case, and this can happen, or again, it could also be that you figure out, okay, well, my solution is already fundamental, then congratulations, you have come up with a really wonderful project. But if you figure out, okay, my problem is maybe symptomatic, you still should not, uh, my, my solution is still symptomatic, you still should not fully give up. But you could, for example, go and say, hey, can it be turned into a fundamental solution? So can I make some tweak about, and this is exactly what social business is about, can I make some tweak about, rather than having a bus saying there is a project, can only translate it, it's like called the Reading Grandma Project, which is going on in my region, where old people whose parents are, who don't have like relatives in the area, can sign up uh, to be a volunteer to um, to sit down with children, maybe from other families where there is maybe a single mother who doesn't have enough time or maybe they don't have, they are like having a migrant background and are not so strong in German language. And they would meet once a week and they would sit and read a book together and, and the children have the advantage of saying, okay, there is some someone who's reading German language book with me and therefore I'm getting deeper into the language. And the old people will have the possibility to build up a relationship with someone younger and therefore get, uh, build up new relationships, for example. So can, your, can this book project with the bus be turned into something like this, for example? Or can we add fundamental activities into this? So maybe the fundamental solution is not to be achieved within the current system, but you need to have a shift in a change in, in the legal structure, or you need to have more awareness about things, or you need to empower people to do something again, or encourage people to dare something. So then you can say, okay, we run this bus project, but also we, I don't know, we invite, for example, not the old people alone to come, but we invite also young people to come and we have a coffee standing there and it will not just be boring the book, but it will be all this experience of saying, I meet someone there, maybe I make a potluck out of it and people bring their own food and therefore conversation starts, no? So how can you say, you have the bus with the books and then in addition you do something which is really a fundamental change. Or another option would be saying okay if, if our idea is really to say we stick to the bus and we stick to the library can you collaborate with an organization or institution which is already working on a fundamental solution and trying to bring about change there? Can you collaborate with I don't know uh, a transition town movement, which is already existing and has been more focusing on agriculture for the time being, but is wanting to bring about deeper change. So is, you might want to want to work together with them because they already work on the on the relationship level, which is there. And maybe you can find a, a synergy so that you have your symptomatic solution, which is great, but you, you always combine it with a fundamental solution. And last but not least, I think I consider this also very important, is saying go back to this question once in a while. 
our, especially now since COVID has started, but even before, our uh, world is permanently in change. I think that's something we can learn from complexity science, that there is permanent loop going on of, of things are changing and some things are changing faster and some are less fast. So maybe what was a fundamental solution in 2010 might not be a fundamental solution anymore now because maybe the context has changed and so on. So, um, or maybe there are now new possibilities, there are new collaborations possible and then so on and so on. So it is absolutely worth saying each few years you go back to this and you've asked yourself, okay, is there an even fundamental solution available today or is there something I can do more? I hope with this small video having given you a short, uh, a nice tool in order how to, how can you figure out whether your solution is really a fundamental solution uh, or a symptomatic solution and how you could make it a fundamental solution then. If you have enjoyed my video, please check out my website uh, as well as my YouTube channel and have a nice day. Bye-bye.